I remember constantly seeing things coming in and out of fashion, and I don't see anything wrong with that. It's a cycle of repeating phenomena that continues until someone wants to wear wide pants again. Recently, it seemed like school kids were wearing Easy Eye and now they're wearing Jordans. It's difficult to keep track of fashion trends. Usually, everything fashionable passes through young people, as they are not against bravely testing and filtering out everything shameful and unnecessary in any phenomenon. But as Uncle Sigmund said, smoking, the reason for smoking is rooted in psychological trauma. He claimed that smoking satisfies the sucking reflex and compensates for the lack of maternal breast. I used to think it was nonsense, but looking at young people repeatedly putting various gadgets of phallic form to their lips, I am once again convinced that German men have interesting perspectives on the world and understand something. And Grandpa Friedrich, when he wrote Berserker, contemplated many interesting topics, such as the uselessness of armor as a metaphor that external invincibility is nothing compared to a well-developed character. I'm talking about the Venetian version of the edition, if that matters. But as always, young people take any criticism too close to heart. I think no writer defends their work as much as posers defend theirs. If you don't care, then guys, a book is not a diploma and even a diploma is not your homeland. You understand that only someone who doesn't care can judge life reasonably. You know, today it's Berserk and tomorrow it's Boku no Pico. The only thing that develops faster than trends among young people is relationships and hentai. In principle, it's cool. Did I ever think that Christian Bale and Edward Norton would be role models for today's youth? No, but as for me, their movies are really cool. It's great that out of the two most popular movies with Norton, TikTok chose Fight Club. Although I think it would have been hypocritical for them to promote American History X, given their good and left-wing politics. Although I think Derek Vineyard fits the bill more than the other two. After all, both Bateman and the narrator are just Sigmas, people who are cool in their fantasy. It's like that situation in real life where you imagine that bandits have attacked your school, and you, under epic music, defeat them all and save the hot English teacher. And of course, she gives you extra credit. How is this different from the two crazy guys from the aforementioned movies? Or is this also related to the romanticization of mental illness among young guys, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and diarrhea? I think a true Sigma would have long understood that there is no such thing as a fierce type in the American pie, as a truly strong person for me has always been someone who accepts facts and does not accept fate of fate, of course, is not satisfactory. What is a weakness for me is denying one's own shortcomings and, of course, blaming the whole world for one's failures. If a person really enjoys being fat, then there is nothing weak about it. But when he is not satisfied with this and instead of accepting the fact, he tries to escape the answer and asks for the help of others, then people will lie without problems, but this will not change his life. No matter what complexes are involved, the essence is the same. The poor wish for others to unite instead of getting rich. It has always been like this. The cowardly hate tea strong, and only truly free people have the power to ignore everything and prove nothing to anyone. To be a cool and self-sufficient guy, or at least not evoke purdy from people, you don't need to prove anything to anyone. You can build a space boss at trying to colonize people on another planet, attracting huge resources and gathering the best minds in one place. But all this goes down the drain because Johnny from TikTok wrote that it's nonsense based on another TikTok he watched half an hour ago. But the point is that when someone you consider an authority for objective or subjective reasons criticizes you, it's another matter. As Jack Fresco said, it's okay. Also, Fresco said that even your own mother can't explain why Japanese people are fierce guys. And anime is top, by the way, this is canon, you can check it out. Also, for me, it's strange to see people who constantly jump from one subculture to another or constantly attribute themselves to some majority or minority. Free people usually disavow labels and groups, while people who don't want to take responsibility live there, inventing quests so that they don't have to strain their brain. They enter the game, take a list of prohibitions and permissions, and live by them easily and simply. You know, you don't have to be a religious person and be afraid that mythical creatures will steal your soul just to avoid being a jerk, and behave like a human, with understanding and compassion. Also, you don't need to wear a certain hairstyle and wear certain clothes to listen to different genres of music or watch various works. Whether you call yourself left, right, eastern, or northern, whatever side of the world or direction you choose, it won't change your world. It's all nonsense. Why limit yourself and build a wall for yourself? By defending your limitations, you deprive yourself of omnipotence. Also, touching on the topic of a strong person, 
We could start with the idea that true strength lies in the ability to remain sensitive to the will and sufferings of others and understand that even a thrown away cigarette butt can cause inconvenience to people. Every time we think about our actions and try to minimize harm to those around us, we will approach the coveted strength. Also, truly cool guys don't give a damn about their ideas not being accepted or about being wrong. You can only see things through your own eyes and the eyes of a few other guys with ping pong racket emblems on their chest. So don't worry, to become a true badass, you don't just need to pretend to be self-sufficient, but actually be self-sufficient. A self-sufficient person doesn't get offended by others, knowing that it's as useless as masturbating or saving up mana. After all, your friend won't appreciate it anyway. How can you get offended by people in a world where one person proves to another person that one guy kicks a ball better than another based on their wet fantasy, especially considering that they've never even seen them in real life? If you pause for a moment and think about what's happening in our world, you'll realize how absurd everything is. Also, anyone who has never made mistakes has never tried anything. So if you think you can do something better, try it and fail. And that's much better than not trying at all. And yes, why do you need to label yourself with trendy words, trying to impress others and becoming your own caricature when you can simply enjoy the beautiful nonsense? Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, guys. Today I am going to make a new video, so please sabarakarai, sabarakarai, sabarakarai.